Aloha and welcome to my channel guys. My name is Ella and I am here to help you retrain your brain. Yes, you read today's title correctly. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the five different ways my rock bottom helped me love my life. So if you want to learn the five lessons that I learned and apply it to your life as well, make sure you keep on watching until the end. And if you want more videos like this where you can learn to turn your rock bottom into your breakthrough moment, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And so before we get into it, let me tell you exactly what my rock bottom was. So when I was 14 years old, just starting out grade nine, I had a severe brain injury and that was called an arterial venous malformation rupture. And that rupture happened in my cerebellum, which is right here at the base of your brain. And as a result, I also experienced two hemorrhagic strokes. Now an AVM is essentially when arteries and veins come together and do not form or attach correctly. They are supposed to form via tiny little blood vessels called capillaries. And what these capillaries do is essentially modulate or regulate the flow of blood. Now in my head, these capillaries didn't form properly and they kind of formed into this clump of blood vessels called a nidus. Now since the blood was still pumping regularly through my body and there was nothing slowing down the flow of the blood, the nidus kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger until one day it burst. Now my damage occurred on the right side of my cortex and the left side of my cerebellum, which actually both control the left side of your body. Now the cerebellum controls things like your motor movements, posture, balance, coordination, and speech. And as a result of my injury, all of those controls of the cerebellum stopped working properly. This led to things like the use of a walker, a short period of short-term memory loss, and I'm talking legit Dory from Finding Nemo, a diagnosis of dysarthria, so I was working a lot with a speech pathologist, as well as just regular physio and a few eye exams to follow up on my peripheral vision. Now, at the time I was 14 years old, I had just made the varsity soccer team at my high school. I was athletic, I wanted to be a lawyer, and I really had my life planned out. So when I had my brain injury, it really put my life on hold. I felt like my identity was taken away from me. I couldn't play soccer anymore. I just felt like my brain didn't process information as quickly. And I really felt like I lost my purpose for living. So long story short, it was after about nine and a half years that I finally started to realize the benefits of my rock bottom and I flipped my perspective so that I could see what hurt me as my ultimate breakthrough moment. All right, so reason number one, my rock bottom helped me love my life is that I realized human beings are honest to goodness, the most astounding creatures ever. <laughs> Think about all the times in history people have said things like, oh, I really wish I could write this news article faster. Printing press, invented. Or I wish I could get my friend's opinion on this issue right now. Telephone, invented. Or even something like, I wish I could get my friend's opinion on this right now as I'm walking through the park. Cell phone. Invented. You get the idea. So next time you're faced with an incredibly difficult situation, whether it be at school, at home, just figuring out your career or your friends or any problem, just think about all those other thousands of people that also said, holy shit, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. And then they researched and they strategized and they worked hard and smart and figured out how to do it. Humans are completely capable of working not only harder, but also smarter to get themselves out of difficult situations. And I think that's just honestly the most amazing thing. And I am so incredibly grateful to be alive. Think about it in terms of this. Humans are both able to do things as well as capable of doing things. Now, what is the difference? Well, when you're able to do something, it means you're essentially physically able. Like I am able to make a YouTube video because I can speak, right? And I can press the play button on my camera so it could actually film me. Now, how can I use my capabilities to make a YouTube video? Well, I invested in a decent camera so I can have better quality of video. I write all my notes down on a script so that I actually know what I'm telling you and it makes sense. So I can use my mind to actually strategize and figure out how to enhance what I'm already able to do. So the second way my rock bottom helped me love my life is that I realized life is precious. Actually though, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people think they know this because the phrase is talked about so often, but they don't fully comprehend it. And I know I certainly didn't fully comprehend it until I actually almost lost my chance at living. 
So as you live your one and only life, make sure you're doing it in a way that makes you happy and provides you with meaning. I read the most amazing book probably about a couple months ago and it's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor E. Frankl. I highly, highly recommend it. Anyways, in this book, Frankl discusses that meaning is essentially the gap between who you are in this moment and who you can become and all the things that you can do. So when you live for meaning and live to find meaning, you're essentially living for all those potentialities that you could create as a reality in the future. Think about it, you could literally die before this video ends and I really, really hope nobody does. But do you really want to be on your deathbed saying things like, man, I really wish I did that or man, I really wish I just tried that out. Just do things that give you meaning in your life because your life should be important to you. Now, reason number three, my rock bottom helped me love my life is that I realized existence is the most wonderful miracle. And the simple fact that things exist and humans exist to create new things is just honestly amazing. And here's why. Think about a banana. This is not a joke. Think about where a banana comes from. It comes from the ground, right? And what the heck is the ground? It's literally brown decay. And then over how many years, all of a sudden this stick thing started growing up from the ground and the stick thing grew bigger and bigger and it became a banana tree and it started sprouting these tiny little crescent moon type things called bananas. And once the banana becomes yellow enough, you can literally take the banana off of the stick thing that is called the tree that comes from the brown decay that is called the ground. And you can literally peel the layers off of this yellow thing and inside it is soft and sweet and it has potassium and minerals and we can literally eat this thing and it tastes good and it actually keeps us alive. Think about how freaking cool that is. Not to mention that humans literally genetically modified this banana so that it actually tasted better and it didn't even have seeds in it. How cool is that? And now you may be thinking, Ella, why are you telling me about a banana? I'm telling you this because sometimes it's the seemingly insignificant things in our lives, the things that seem normal or just not out of the ordinary, that are really, truly miraculous. I'm telling you guys, existence is a miracle. Which leads me to my fourth point, which is be grateful for what you have and don't do stupid because you could lose what you have and regret it forever. So I mentioned before that one of the things that pushed me into my rock bottom was that I felt like I lost my identity, right? I was supposed to be a big shot soccer player and a lawyer and those things just couldn't happen for me after. I just couldn't process as quickly and on the soccer field, I just couldn't make decisions as quickly as I wanted to and sometimes passes with my left foot just turned into a really embarrassing fail. But the fact that I can still actually play soccer even at a slightly competitive level and the fact that I have my left foot at all is freaking awesome and I'm so incredibly grateful for that because I could have had it so much worse and I didn't. So I highly recommend you focus on the things that you have and the things that you can do so you can actually boost your self-confidence and your sense of self-worth. Do not focus on the things that you can't do or the things that you used to do better because negative and retrospective comparisons are not going to give you strength. Now at the same time, don't do stupid that could cause you to lose all the things that you're grateful for. So really simple things like wear your seatbelt, don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, eat healthy foods, you get the idea. Because one day if you do something that puts yourself in harm's way and causes damage and causes you to lose what you have, that could potentially change your life or even end your life. A really good picture I want to paint for you is think of a time when you're with your buddies or you hear somebody with their buddies and they're talking about, oh bro, do you remember that time when we like got super hammered and we jumped off that bridge? Oh my god, we could have died, haha. Ha. No one thinks that's cool. In fact, that's stupid. Don't do stupid <laughs> Don't put yourself in harm's way because you might actually regret something for the rest of your life. Now the fifth and most important thing I learned from my rock bottom is, and I quote, don't be afraid of death, be afraid of the unlived life. 
That is a quote from one of my all-time favorite movies called Tuck Everlasting. And after I hit my rock bottom, I really came to understand and fully comprehend the meaning of that quote. Now this one's an interesting one because I know it's a really difficult balance between my last point, which was don't do stupid to put yourself in harm's way and actually living your life to the fullest. But if you just make responsible decisions and responsible decisions that make you happy, then that's the balance that you should be looking for and that is the ultimate life that I think you should be living. So do what you want and don't worry about what other people say or do. I know that's difficult. But when we concern ourselves with these opinions of other people, it's only going to hinder our personal development. So you wanted to make that YouTube video? Post it. You wanna go traveling for a year? Book your ticket. You have literally one shot at life. So as long as you're doing things that make you happy and you're living and you're learning, do whatever the hell you want and don't worry about other people's opinions. And if you want to know more about why you are really the only person that can understand whether or not you are quote unquote fine, then make sure you tune in for next week's video where that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. So I really hope that you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you start to apply these life lessons to your life. Don't wait until you hit your rock bottom. Learn from other people. And again, if you want more videos like this every week, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, I hope you have a great day and don't forget to make this the year of you. Bye.